the labor, the work. Some people go for affirmations, but see that's, I do believe in affirmations, but here's the key on affirmations, and that is to affirm the truth. Affirm the truth. If you're broke, best thing to affirm is, I am broke. You put that up on the refrigerator where you can see it every day. It'll drive you to sign up for a class to learn a skill so that this doesn't happen anymore. Now, if that doesn't do it, uh, reaffirm and put this up there. I'm 40 and broke. That's a lot more alarming. Something might be wrong with your philosophy, your policy, your plan, and your strategy. So, affirm, yes, but always affirm the truth. Here's what the old prophet said. The truth will set you free. Now, here's the freedom of the truth. Number one, freedom of the truth to correct old errors in judgment. That's the freedom of the truth. Because if you don't speak the truth, then you're likely not to correct the errors in judgment. If something's wrong, but you say, hey, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. How are you going to correct the errors in judgment that made it wrong? See, you can't say it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and finally it turns out to be fine. Say, no. The only way to go from wrong to fine is not by affirmation. The way to go from wrong to fine is to figure out where the errors in judgment were by speaking the truth. Something's wrong here. Finding out what's wrong, making the changes. Now it can go from wrong to fine. Here's a good phrase, affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Now here's what else the truth does. First, it sets you free to correct old errors in judgment. Here's what else it does. Helps you to set up new easy disciplines to turn wrong into right, to turn lack into prosperity, to turn skepticism into faith. But in order to turn wrong into right, we must speak the truth because only the truth will set you free free to correct an error in judgment. Because here's the formula for failure and here's the formula for success. Formula for failure, number one, a few errors in judgment repeated every day. We call that the formula for failure. A few errors in judgment repeated every day. Now, why would you repeat an error in judgment the second day? Reason, failure doesn't occur at the end of the first day. If it did, it would be helpful because then you wouldn't do that anymore. But errors in judgment are so subtle because they don't usually show their results until for a while. But a few errors in judgment repeated every day, every day, every day, and sure enough, you're way off course. Now, here's all you got to do to turn that around. A few simple disciplines practiced every day, a few simple disciplines practiced every day starts to create success. Not at the end of the first day. The first day is the end of a new beginning the first day, that you've started a new track, that you've started a new direction. So we must all speak the truth. So affirm the truth. Yes, affirm God is good. Yes, affirm life is full of possibilities. Yes, affirm all the truthful possibilities. But you don't need to try to trick yourself into saying something is okay when it isn't okay. Some people say every day in every way I'm getting better and better. And if that's not true, see, that, then that we call that delusion. If it's not true, if it is true, then it's wonderful, it's fabulous, we should celebrate. But if it's not true, every day in every way I'm getting better and better. See, if that's not true, then it is an affirmation that's destructive. So just affirm the truth. The truth is I lack some skills to multiply my income by 10, which I wish to do in the future. I need to learn the skills, affirm that you don't have the skills, so that it'll drive you to get the skills because you want to multiply your income by 10. Yes, it is true. All things are possible to the believer. It is true. Errors in judgment lead to devastation. We don't just need the truth. We need the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Here's what we don't need. Delusion. You don't need delusion in order to try to make something out of nothing. All you need is this simple little formula to imagine because imagination is so powerful. It's the beginning of creating all things that we see. Then faith to believe it's possible. It says what? With faith, everything's possible. Without faith, nothing is possible. So that's a good study to make, creating faith to believe it's possible. But now we deposit faith and imagination into muscle, into discipline. Michelangelo was a genius, but it wasn't his genius that created this famous sculpture. But his genius was so strong and he believed in it so thoroughly that he picked up the chisel and the hammer. And it was the muscle and the chisel and the hammer that created the sculpture. And without the discipline, there would be no sculpture. But if you take your genius, if you take your ideas and your inspiration and your excitement and translate it into muscle, 
If you want good health, you can study every book there is and you can believe that it's possible to be healthy. But until you fall on the floor and start doing the push-ups, until you jog around the block, right? And still you start working on your good health, working and laboring. Labor pains, we call it. So add this to your repertoire of good ideas. New life only comes from labor. Now, some people try to create it with affirmation, but it doesn't work. New life only comes from labor. That's why we should devote most of our time to labor because it's the miracle creator. It says six days labor and one day rest. Don't get those numbers mixed up. And here's why. It isn't rest that creates the miracle. It's labor that creates the miracle. And you just go right down the list. Labor creates the miracle of a career. Labor creates the miracle of a hotel. Labor creates the miracle of a fortune. You can have plenty of miracle. You don't need to engage in delusion. You just engage in reality. And here's what's real. Imagination, supported by faith, invested in labor, works miracles. The miracle of a relationship. The labor of my language produces the miracle of sight. Being able to see things you couldn't see before. If I labor well enough with the vocabulary and language that I've got, describing the value of my own ideas translated for you, maybe it'll help you to see something today, tomorrow, that you've never seen before. So the labor of my language, the work, and lecturing is hard work. They say one hour of intense lecturing is like digging ditches for eight hours. The intensity and, and, the, and the energy and the vitality it takes, right? You just become almost exhausted sometimes in laboring with words to get your vocabulary out there where it touches someone's consciousness so that they can see something they've never seen before. And we call that miracle stuff. I don't know how it works. You don't need to know how it works. All you need is a simple analysis like this. But the labor takes the idea supported by faith, translate it into labor, and it starts producing all kinds of miracle. So now you can understand that you are a miracle worker. Would a miracle worker sleep late? I doubt it. Unique thing about genius, genius has no sense of time. It's amazing. If you could have met Michelangelo and you know, you get there and it's like 11 o'clock, it's like midnight. And you said to Michelangelo, isn't it a little late? And Michelangelo would say, late, late, what is, what's, what's this late? What does that mean, late? I don't understand, late. To a genius, it's not late. <laughs> to the average person, it's getting late. But to a genius, it's not late. Say, well, Michelangelo, I'll meet you here in the morning and watch you get started. And you got to get there at four o'clock. You say, it's really early. And Michelangelo says, early? What's er I don't understand this. What's this early? It doesn't compute early, not to a genius, because the genius is consumed by the finished product and he devotes his imagination and his faith translated into muscle to produce the sculpture. Now you can do that with your health. Health is just as valuable as the sculpture that inspires the world. You know, your own education, your own future, your own career, your own relationships, a building a hotel, creating success, making a fortune. It's all part of the same scheme of imagination, faith supported by labor. And now all things are possible to those that believe. Wow.